Hi, Spring fans. Welcome to another installment of Spring Tips. I'm in New York City as I record this episode, and uh, yeah, things are, you know, preparation is well underway for the amazing Spring One event happening in a few, in, a, in about a week, actually. And so, yeah, I have a quick, really cool video for you today. Uh, namely, I want to look at a new feature in the snapshots and the upcoming M2 release of Spring AI that supports observability. Now, it, this is really cool because if you've ever used any of these models, especially the hosted ones like OpenAI and Cloud and uh, Gemini and uh, and the like, they have metering attached to it. And, and they can be quite expensive if you start to use them at any kind of scale. So it's very good to have ways to kind of measure your usage and to kind of understand what's going on there. And also to see the movement of data through an LLM and AI based system using Spring AI. So naturally, we have the Micrometer project super good at this kind of stuff. And so what we're going to do today, my friends, is, as always, we're going to take a look at it and begin our journey. You know where? Start that spring that I owe. All right, we're going to go to start that spring that I owe. I'm going to call this new service Beautiful AI. Okay. We're going to add the usual suspects, GraalVM, of course, the web support, the open AI module. Of course, there are many different modules in the Spring AI project, you, you know, your premier vehicle for AI engineering patterns. Uh, but we're going to use open AI. And the reason is because, as I said earlier, it's expensive. There's metering involved in Gemini, Gemini and Azure, OpenAI and uh, Cloud and all these hosted, you know, the, these tools are amazing, but they're not doing it for free, right? They, they need to at least recoup their costs and it's not cheap to do that. So we want to make sure we have a way to measure usage and kind of understand what's happening. So here's OpenAI. We are also going to need a distributed tracing and I'll use Zipkin for that. And of course, we want the actuator to see some metrics. You could, of course, configure something more sophisticated for visibility of your metrics using e.g. Uh, Prometheus, but I'm happy with this. I also want Docker Compose just because I want the Docker Compose file that'll be generated for us that'll give us a Zipkin support. Okay, let's hit generate, open this up. We have this zip file now. All right, here's our new project all configured for us. We've got the Zipkin Reporter Brave, Micrometer Tracing Brave, the Spring AI, Spring Boot Starter, and then, of course, we want to use Snapshot. That's very important here as well. So I'll use that. OK, re-import. Command-Shift-I. I've got the milestones. Everything's good. OK, so that should be 1.0 Snapshot. Very good. So now let's go to our code, AI application. And you know, first things first, we're going to connect to our model. This is OpenAI. And I'm going to use this chat client to do the work. Obviously, for that to do its work, it needs, first of all, an OpenAPI API key like this. And so we'll, you know, we'll specify that. I've already done that off screen. So, you know, it's an environment variable there. And then we need to specify what model we want to use. Obviously, and the more premium models cost more. So this is one of the dimensions of of configuration, one of the knobs or levers that you can manipulate to fine tune your spend and to understand your con resource consumption and so on. And also, sometimes the trade off isn't about the price, it's it's about speed or, or uh, convenience or precision or whatever. Okay, so we've done that. And we, you know, it's the, we're gonna use the actuator. So we wanna expose all the HTTP endpoints there. Wanna show the details for the health endpoint. Sure, why not? We wanna have the, I think that's enough. We're gonna be using virtu you know a, a network call. So of course we want virtual thread to be enabled. Fantastic. Go here at controller, at response body, joke controller. Okay. Private final chat client. Inject that. And then we're just going to create a simple HTTP endpoint. You know, you know, nothing too fancy here. Map string string joke. Okay. There's this. So let's, let's write the reply. Let's get the reply. So we'll say chat client dot prompt dot uh, user, tell me a joke, be concise, don't send anything besides the joke, or don't send anything except the joke. Call content. Okay, let's go ahead and call and then content, and now put the joke in there like so. And that should be enough, right? I think that should be pretty much everything we need. Let's go ahead and try it out. Okay, so the Docker Compose, you know, integration is starting up the Docker Compose file for us. Uh, we don't need it to do this anymore though, we'll just let it run. Or actually, 
we want to do a Docker Compose lifecycle start only. So if it's existing, if it's already started, then don't bother restarting it and don't stop it next time. Okay, so let's try this out. We'll go here. Localhost 8080 forward slash joke. There you go. All right, okay, simple. Why did the Scarecrow win an award? Because he was outstanding in his field. Why don't skeletons fight each other? They don't have the guts. You get the idea, okay? So let's see. Now we go to Actuator. Go to Metrics. There's the metrics, and you can see a lot of stuff related to GenAI.client and also Spring.ai in particular, right? So you can see uh, we've got this metric, right? We can see that this has been invoked four different times, right? So very, very, very convenient. We've also got metrics related to the particular thing, the uh, particular client. So go back, Gen AI client operations and token usage. Let's take that, there you go. Measures number of input and output tokens used, okay? So there you go, 290, that's very, very useful to know. And so the model, for example, is GPT-40-2024-513. The request model is this, the token type, output, input, total, Gen AI system, open AI. So you can you can actually see, you can see the dimensions, you can see the values. It's, it looks like we've, you know, input and output is about 290 tokens. Very, very convenient. And then we go back to here and you can actually, you know, you can see the, the Spring AI sort of high level metric as well. So very, 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 very convenient. It tells us operations about it tells us information about which operations are being executed and the client itself, our, our code, right? Now, we've also got a Zipkin distributed tracing system running in the background there. And that'll be on port 9411, assuming I restart the application and expose the port. So I'll restart. Remember, it shut down the first time I ran it and shut it down. Now it's restarting it and it's now running. So that'd be 9411. Let's go here. Localhost 9411. Okay, let's uh, make some requests to localhost 8080 forward slash joke. Why don't scientists trust atoms? Because they make up everything. Okay, interesting that we're getting the same joke. Is it cash? No, there you go. Why don't skeletons fight each other? They don't have the guts. Scarecrow. What? Okay, well, clearly ChatGPT has a very limited repertoire of jokes. But okay, fine. Now we go here. And you can see I made a request to HTTP get forward slash joke. And if I click on the details here, I can actually see that it started from here. It went to the Spring AI chat client. It went to Spring AI's integration with chat GPT 4.0. And then we saw an HTTP post being made. And you can see the duration for all that time. And remember, this is very interesting stuff to, to look at because it tells you, you know, function names, function callbacks, the kind of request, uh, the chat client advisor params. I mean, all sorts of interesting stuff related to our our request and our response and, and all that gen AI usage, output tokens, input tokens. And you can also see the time, right? Total time was about a second for a given request. And, and then we got a, a call to chat GPT. And most of the time, most of this one second that we spent was spent inside of just this request in chat GPT itself, right? Making the, making the request. And remember that one second is time where your system could be serving other requests, which is why one of the first things I do whenever I use Spring AI or indeed almost anything these days, is to enable virtual threads. It's just free scalability sauce. You just get to handle more traffic with the existing infrastructure. Wonderful, wonderful software. Um, okay, so that's been that. I don't want to spend too much time on this. Uh, I've done videos on uh, distributed tracing and uh, metrics and all that. I'll do more. I just wanted to sort of tease some of these really, really cool capabilities so that you too can kind of re react and respond to overwhelming demand. Thanks so much for watching as always, and uh, we'll see you next week at spring one. It's going to be awesome.